Catherine Roseland here with Board Game Geek TV at Spiel 2013. I'm sitting here with Henry Jasper from Grublin Games. Hello. And he's here to talk about the new game, Cornish Smuggler. Yeah, Cornish Smuggler. Yeah. So, um, let me tell you a bit about how Cornish Smuggler works. Um, as you probably guessed, uh, this is a game uh, which is about smuggling. Um, it's St. Cornwall, which is um, this place right down the bottom of the UK. So um, it's uh, got a really good history of smuggling um, because um, it was so kind of like uh, removed. Um, yeah, it's Cornish smuggler, okay. <laughs> so, oh. all right, so um, uh, in this game, uh, your goal is to, you play smugglers, your goal is to smuggle goods. So you um, each have a ship, which is kind of uh, something that looks like this. Um, you move your ship to uh, one of these places where you can pick up your goods. Okay. Um, you buy your goods. You have to fit them on your ship, so um, ah. that's okay. And that's not okay, that kind of thing. Yep. So these um, little cross areas, you can't put anything yeah, over, basically. That's it. Yep. And then you would move your ship to somewhere where you can sell your goods, which are these places with the numbers on them. I see. Um, and that's kind of on the face of it, that's what it is. So it's pick up and deliver. The way Cornish Smuggler kind of gets interesting is because we've got um, unique kind of character cards. Smuggling didn't, it wasn't something that one person did. It involved like pretty much most of the community. So everyone from the farmer to the fisherman to, uh, to the mayor to the vicar, all this kind of thing. So these are the people that you need to uh, hire to kind of build your smuggling network. Interesting. So these kind of pieces you can see on here, these are people that have been hired. Um, and uh, so yellow is kind of starting to build a network here and red's kind of doing this kind of thing. Um, when you get your goods to the place where you need to sell them, uh, you have a choice about how much you sell your goods for. So each of the towns has like a um, kind of a kind of variety of kind of prices that you can choose. The reason why you'd want to do this, so you can either sell for like the most gold, um, which is kind of uh, one of your victory conditions. So it's like the most gold plus reputation, uh, which I'll get to in a sec. Um, or you can sell it cheap, which will mean you'll get more reputation. So yeah. reputation is kind of the oil that kind of makes the smuggling happen, yeah. whereas gold's kind of the, the kind of more of the thing that you need to win the game. Exactly. Um, the reason why you kind of, when you sell your goods, so each bit I haven't talked about is the customs guys. So these are these black things here. So for each bit of gold that you make from uh, selling goods, yeah. um, this will move this thing around by one. Okay, um, this little wheel here. Yeah, so when it kind of gets, hits the start, this will kind of go up and go up and go up and go up. And then when we hit these guys, more customs guys will come down. So the more smuggling that happens, the more powerful customs become. Yeah. So they get more expensive to bribe. Um, they become more aware of what you're doing. So customs isn't a playable character in this game. Um, it's uh, customs officers react to what you guys do as smugglers. Um, the more so you're, you smuggle, the more interested they're going to be. And, yeah, 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 totally. And there'll be more of them, and it'll become harder and harder. So at the beginning, and the more you pay them, the power more power. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, at the beginning, it's very easy to smuggle. Towards the end, it's slightly more interesting. Um, okay. So. What you have is um, your kind of job is as a smuggler is kind of not only just to kind of make money um, and to um, make sure you hire enough people, but not too many people. So each yeah. person's got a gold cost over here, All right. and they have a reputation modifier also. Should so I do? yeah, yeah, cool. So the gold cost and the reputation modifier. Yeah. yeah. So um, you need to have enough people to be able to smuggle effectively, but not too many people. And each person's got like a special something with them. So they might make it a bit easier for you to uh, move your ship around, or they might make it a bit easier to move customs around, or they might give you a, uh, a storehouse. So you can hide your goods from customs as well. So that's what kind of, I'll show these things. So that's what these are. So um, if you've got your goods in here, these kind of relate to different places on the board. So this one's in Port 11, which is down here. This one's a little lamp, which is just over here. Um, so yeah, so they, uh, when you have your goods in there, they're safe from customs, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, or they, uh, the other thing we have, okay. So the other thing that's kind of uh, really different about Cornish Smuggler is the fact uh, that it's based on something that actually happened. Yeah. So Cornwall uh, was famously notorious for smuggling, like really, really famous. Um, and it all happened about 200 years ago. So each of the places which are on the game board are places where smuggling actually happened. All the, the different town sizes that we have, so like Penzance is a seven, Madison's a three, that kind of thing, um, relate to how much smuggling happened in that area I see. and how much of a demand there was for those goods. Um, all the... So some areas will have more and other yeah, yeah. areas will have So you'll less. make more money if you sell in Penzance than if you sell in Madison, for instance. And you'll make more money if you sell a bigger good piece rather than a, yeah, yeah. a smaller one, for instance. 
Um, all the, the places where you can store things, so the storehouse that I showed you, they're real places that still exist, that did have goods smuggled. Okay, so um, these names here. Yeah, all the things, so there's uh, secrets cards as well in this. So when you, you have some characters that kind of give you secrets because they know a secret, or um, you might discover them in another way, that kind of thing. And each of the secrets cards, they, um, these are all things that people actually did to smuggle. I see, um, so they're actually little historical tidbits. Even the names of the characters on here are people who were actually arrested for smuggling, for some form of smuggling or another, 200 years ago. Um, and so, yeah, they're in here. So the idea is to kind of have a game which kind of feels like it could have come from like the 18th century, um, but also a game which has a crystal like directly relatable experience between Cornwall today and Cornwall from then. Exactly. And that's kind of that. And gives it a bit of a historical background. Yeah, yeah. Adds a little bit of a yeah. yeah. So there's there's as little kind of what I've kind of trying to do when I was kind of creating this was to make a game which has as as little randomness as possible. So there's no dice or anything like that. Um, the only kind of randomness is when you first kind of turn these guys over. Yes. So exactly. as you kind of hire a new person, a new person will get turned over. That kind of so thing. So you can be lucky and have a, a de have a selection that is exactly what you want, or you could be unlucky and have. A... But then you still have to buy them. Exactly. And you still have to have other people who won't exactly. buy them. Exactly. So, so there's very little. Yeah. Uh, um, but it's uh, so you have a choice of everything you can do. So you have kind of like an action card over here. So this is kind of a list of everything that you can do in the game. And um, with each of these things, you have a choice about how you pay for it. So you can either use gold, which is kind of the kind of main way to win, yeah. or you can use uh, influence, which is kind of generated by reputation. So uh, what will happen is we'll kind of all the players will kind of go around and they'll be spending to do actions um, until they pass. But rather than having passing as like a last ditch thing because you run out of everything, um, I want the passing to be something which is a strategic choice, okay. which actually gave you an advantage and there's a definite reason why you do it. Um, so that's why that's in here. Um, yeah, the, uh, there's kind of a couple of things which are kind of created to balance the game. So the, the kind of Tetris -esh -esh yes. pieces. Um, that's kind of a cute thing, but the reason, the real reason it's there is to make it so it's not possible for someone to just kind of snuff everything. Exactly. Because you can't fit it all in your boat. Yeah, you have so, to plan and then... Yeah. So there's 10 different boats system. in the game. Um, so you have a choice about kind of what you have at the beginning. Um, you have to start with characters, so you have a kind of a choice about that. You kind of have a choice about how you go about smuggling. Um, but then you have the secrets cards, which um, kind of give you like a like a strategic kind of like way to go, if that makes sense. Exactly. They allow you to more easily plan. Otherwise, you'd have a choice paralysis and you'd just go, oh. So, Whereas yeah. these kind of let you focus in on something specific. Yeah, definitely. So as you're picking these things up, you're like, oh, I can do that, or I can do that. So if customers are to seize your goods, then to say, Red kind of gets over here, lands their goods. This guy here is um, currently bribed, um, so he belongs Which to is, Red. Uh, shown by the little uh, elastic band that's yeah, yeah. put around Yeah, so each of the players have kind of a number of elastic bands which they can put around um, the customs guys. Um, but if this was to be removed for a reason, so say someone else, um, say like Yellow had a, a guy over here and then wanted to re-bribe him to be Yellow, then this would be pinched, Red would lose it, it would go into the customs warehouse. Oh. Um, but then people have the option later, well, to be able to, this is kind of located in Penzance, people have the option of then raiding the customs warehouse, getting the seized goods back, and then being able to resell them. So there's a lot of back and forth with this game, okay. um, which is really nice. Hmm. How long will a game typically last? Okay, so Cornish Smuggler is a game for two to five players. Two to five, yeah. Uh, it takes roughly around about half an hour to play, but then, uh, per player, sorry. Per player, okay, well, all that right. That was close. Um, <laughs> but then, um, as with any game, I mean, it's kind of like the first time you play it, it'll be a bit longer, and yes, you can exactly. obviously do that a bit quicker. And, but so two players about, an hour, three players an hour and a half. Yeah, roughly. So That's yeah. probably the best way to kind of do it, yeah. 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 Interesting. Um, yeah, that's great. Okay. Very interesting. So that's Cornish Smuggler from uh, Rubbling Games. Rubbling Games, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.